The member for Durack. Here, here, here. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, I note the word failure is used in this MPI today, and we on this side of the chamber know a thing or two about those opposites failure, as we were left to fix the economic mess created by those some three years ago. That's right. So, Deputy Speaker, I'm very pleased to rise in this House today to speak on this so-called matter of public importance, although it is highly misleading. Why is that? Well, let's look at the facts. We've heard a few of them today. We, we, we know that the gross debt that the last Labor government left behind was $310 billion and that the net debt was $191.5 billion, and with a very healthy trajectory. And we've heard recently about their black spots as well. So clearly they're not getting any better with their money use. So, Deputy Speaker, when those opposite were in charge of the country's purse strings, they were true to form. They funded everything and anything from the Pink Bats disaster to Mr G's performing art schools, which, if left unchecked, would have left a massive tax burden for generations to come. However, we on this side are left to fix the mess. Last night's budget illustrates that the Turnbull government has an economic plan that ensures that Australia successfully transitions to a stronger, more diversified new economy. So to the hard-working Australians, the adults are in charge and we are looking after you. We, the Turnbull gov government, delivered last night's budget, which is about two things, jobs and growth. It is worth repeating, Deputy Speaker, jobs and growth. More jobs for the good folk of the Kimberley, the Pilbara, the Gascoigne, and more jobs and economic growth for the people of the Midwest and Wheatbelt. These are all areas in my large electorate of Durack. Our transition to our diversified economy includes policies such as the National Innovation and Science Agenda, which will be Australia's way forward. Deputy Speaker. Science, health, research, IT, defence, they are just a few of the industries which will be boosted through our agenda. And as we transition, Deputy Speaker, out of the construction mining-led economy, the people in the northwest of my electorate know only too well the importance of creating new industries and investing in the jobs of the future. These are the people who have been hit the hardest, Deputy Speaker, from the slowdown of the mining construction boom. Deputy Speaker, the assistance for the middle income earners is music to the ears of the hard-working people in Durack, and it also provides an incentive for people to work harder and to earn more. And I'm sure you can recall, Deputy Speaker, I've said on many occasions that governments don't create jobs. Businesses do. Yeah, yeah. That's right. With the announcement last night that small and medium-sized businesses with an annual turnover of $2 million will have their taxes significantly reduced mm -hmm. to, to 27.5 per cent, this is exactly the sort of environment which will assist our backbone of the country, small and medium-sized businesses who will be able to create those jobs that we desperately need in our economy. And what we do know is that within 10 years our company tax rate will be down to 25 per cent, which is good news all round. So, Deputy Speaker, we've also there's some great announcements in the budget regarding young people. And the one I'm particularly pleased about is the $1.4 billion announcement with respect to more education funding. Mm -hmm. This particular fund is going to ensure that all students in all schools around Australia, are, we're going to ensure these young people have got the bare basics for their education and for their long learning for life. So things like literacy and numeracy, which we all have got terrible examples of young people leaving, leaving school without the basics, we will ensure that these issues are covered off. So, in other good news regarding young people, I, I don't consider it a failure. I think it's an, it's an absolute success. We hear that young people often cannot get a first foot on the ladder, Deputy Speaker. They have no experience, so employers will not employ them. And I hear this time and time again. You hear from em employers, well, I don't want to give a young person a go because they're inexperienced. So we as the government, you know, we haven't failed. We've come to the rescue. We've said, OK, well, why don't we be the broker in this situation? So I'm very pleased that we've announced our Youth Jobs Path Initiative, which is some $750 million, which over the course of four years will see thousands of young people who are given an opportunity to actually get their first foot on the ladder. So we start with skills training, and that will begin from April 2017, moving into an internment placement initiative, 
um, where we'll see up to 30,000 young seekers each year be eligible to undertake an internship. And following that, there will be a youth bonus wage subsidy to those employers who are willing to give those young people a risk. So we, we're going to back employees and employers, and we're going to create the jobs for the future. Yeah. Yeah.